Welcome to another Ascension Show. I'm Kieran Edwards. And today on set, we have the man behind all the major financial moves and support behind football for the last three years. The mind behind self-sufficient football, self-sustainable football. We have none other than Mr. Richard Ferguson. We actually did a feasibility study on football. And football is a huge... They need to get their act together. They need to understand that the players come first. What's your thought? They will always have some sort of conflict, but they have to manage the conflict in a professional way. And we're back. On set, Mr. Richard Ferguson. Mr. Ferguson, pleasure to have you on set. Thank you, Mr. Edwards, for having me. Um, I think everybody would hear the name Richard Ferguson and now they're going to see the face. That second time on the Ascension show, um, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure having you. We want to talk about the restart of football. Mm -hmm. um, recently, saw in the, in, in the buzzer presentation by the Minister of Finance, they spoke about the restart of football and hoping soon it, it would restart. Um, with your financial background, I think you are the most, mm. I think, most experienced person in finance and football, when it comes to football. And we would like to get, coming out from the, the, the Minister of Finance statements, we want to hear from you in terms of what do you think clubs and teams or leagues would need for the restart of football? Well, first thing we need is we need the approval from the government to, to, to open back contact sports. That's the first thing we need. Then, of course, um, well, of course, the Ascension Tournament ready to go, right? We have already um, contracted um, Sportsmax to do the production of that tournament. And it will be shown live on Sportsmax, I believe, on TV6. And it will also be shown on, um, streamed live over the internet. So, um, we, we are ready and prepared for that. And, but what we're waiting on, we're waiting on the, the go-ahead from the, um, the, the Prime Minister when it is viable to do so. But, but being, a, being a club owner, Mr. Ferguson, mm -hmm. owner of the, the, the Lockheed Atom, Next Rangers, um, having the restart of football, do you think the, a club would be ready? I know, I know your club is, is deemed one of the best clubs, if not the best club in Trinidad and Tobago in terms mm -hmm. of how it's run. But other clubs within the professional league, semi-professional league, do you think that um they would have what it takes to come out of a pandemic being being in terms of sponsors being being losing revenues through the pandemic do you think that they would be able to to start back football once it's allowed by the, the, the powers that be well right now the public and the players and the coaches are starved of football so they are really 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 up and ready to go you know it's i would i would suggest say it's it's like pulling back a rubber band Right? And right now it's ready to snap. You know, people really raring, raring to go. Um, in terms of the financial part, obviously, you know, because of the um, the pandemic, the, the economy in Trinidad and all over the world is stressed right now. And um, everybody has financial issues. And they would have financial issues. We have it here in, in, at Rangers. Um, you know, the Pro League has it, the Super League has it. Every, it it's throughout. You know, and that's the issue. But, you know, we need to get back on the horse, you know, um, and, 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 and start riding again and start going again. But it has been a very difficult two years, very, very hard, especially for players who rely on football as a source of income. And I think they are they're ready to go. Um, what, what we know that at, at your club, players mm -hmm. would have been paid through the pandemic. Um, we know that clubs... Other professional clubs, that would not have been the case. Um, players, the, the aspect of players, in terms of the, the normalization committee would have had been given a grant from FIFA in terms of a, a COVID relief grant. Um, that being not translated or, or, or trickled down to the players, being the, the, the bottom of that, not, not getting a, pass, a piece of that pie. Um, what's your thoughts on, on terms of the relief for players um, coming back into playing football because they need to get their, their supplements, they need to start a train. What's your thoughts on? Well, I would expect if you receive COVID relief, um, the, co the COVID relief would um, supplement the income 
or, or supplement what they would have lost if the pandemic wasn't there. But unfortunately, that wasn't done. You know, I, I wasn't party to it. You know, and I would assume that FIFA would have specified how the money should have been spent. But I would expect if, if you have been granted COVID relief, that relief would be given to people or to clubs or to players who would, who would have suffered during the pandemic because of the pandemic. It's really relief for them. But I didn't see that for forthcoming. I but I I wouldn't know why. All right. So if, if so, we we are look, hoping to have football resume mm. shortly. Um, the 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 Minister of Finance mentioned it, but there was no no stimulus, no any any added benefit in terms of the restart to, to contact sports. Um, more so football in terms of having clubs getting some assistance. That's just the same players we're talking about. Um, what's your thoughts on in terms of of the budget presentation and and any relief for, for contact sports and players and, and the most vulnerable group in terms of sport? Well, the, the, the problem with, with um, football right now in Trinidad and Tobago is that it's an amateur sport, right? There's only really and truly three, three clubs who really pay players. That is Police, Defence Force and Rangers. The other clubs, when they get money from the government, they hire some players and they come and they play, right? I, I don't feel or I don't believe the government has enough revenue to, um, to finance football anymore. I, I don't believe so because right now the employment rate is, is increasing. I believe it's about 5.1% they quote in any budget. Um, the public debt has increased enormously, enormously. The balance of payments is bad which means we're spending more foreign exchange than we're receiving. Um, so, so it's not a good situation. It's not good economic indicators. And you really need to adopt some prudent financial management to steer through this difficult time. Right? It's very, very difficult. And it's going to be hard. And it's going to be hard on everybody. And of course, um, probably the footballers will be the worst. You know, because it's, football is not seen as something essential. But um, you know we need to we need to rally through. We need to, to to circle the wagons and and see how best we could progress from here. But but you made a statement that football in Trinidad and Tobago is not seen as essential or deemed essential with, with it. But when you watch internationally, economies are built on on, on football. Re major revenue is, is is produced by 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 football. Um, what do you think is the, is, is the problem locally here for, in terms of why are we looking at football in this way? Well, one of the problems you have is that football is a wave. In 1989, there was a wave and there was a lot of money in football. When we um, went to the, to the World Cup, it was a wave and there was a lot of money in football. But right now, the national team is not doing well. The domestic leagues not at a high level. The um, the the colleges football not at a very high level. So you'd find that the wave right now is is not at its crest. You know, it's it's low, and and that's the, that's the problem right now. In other words, then if if we had re won the gold cup, the situation would have been different. If we if we had reached the world cup, if we was in the, the final eight. You know, it would have been different. But we're not doing well. We're not performing well. So you would find that interest and that support is not forthcoming. Corporate Trinidad and Tobago will not support a losing team. And that's the, that's the problem we're having. And then in addition to that, it has a lot of, of um, acrimony and animosity within the football. You know, it has a lot of fighting. And this is not a good public image. This is not something that corporate sponsors want to get involved in. They don't want to be seen to be in an antagonistic or aggressive or um, combative environment. And that does not help, you know, when they come out publicly and they argue and they quarrel and so on with one another. So, all right, so we're in a, we're in a, a bad state in terms of 
where corporate Trinidad, the investors in football is looking at, at, at our football currently. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the success of a national team could help foster corporate involvement back into the football. But we need to develop leagues. We need to have teams playing good. We need to, to, to get the club style level where the national team could now benefit from that to get corporate Trinidad back in. Um, your model that you would have made in, in Lockheed to next Rangers at the ground, at the, at the field, the facilities. Um, I know personally there's, there's a model where there, the club could sustain itself on a yearly basis. Um, would you share with, with other persons, with other clubs, the, the, the model that is needed to, for a club to be able to become self-sufficient? Well, of course, it's not a secret. You know, what, what we did here is not a secret. What we did is, one, is we went back to the communities, right? We have a team that is based in La Hokita. Now, historically, football has always come out of the depressed rural, the depressed areas, you know? And that's where football is. Football is a, a grassroots sport. It's not a middle class. It's not an upper class. It's a grassroots sport. So we went back to the community. We established a ground in the area. And what we have been able to do is, I think there are about eight players on the Rangers team that are from La Hokita. So you would find out when we have a game, they would be able to come and see their players. You know, I could call a few. Um, Jabari Sintelier, six foot seven, goalkeeper, young guy, 22 years old, very large. And um, he is from La Hokita. You know, um, the head coach, they've come in and some La The captain, Jamal Crichton, he is some La So that is what we have been doing. And that now will eventually filter down into results by having the crowd come and support the team, the community support the team. We actually have a little, a little small little fan, fan, um, fan group, which is good. But that is expected to grow as the team becomes more popular and, they, and, and we develop more and we get better results. They'll become more. And in the long run, you're going to get football with a more stronger fan base. And that's where we have to go. In addition to that, what we have done on the ground is we have made the ground TV ready. So we have TV camera stands, we have an offside stand. We have developed um, places for the, the, the television crew to, to sit, a commentary box, because the solution has to be, it has to go on television, because that is where you're going to stimulate the, the larger passion and the, the growth uh, behind, the, behind the, um, the team. I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that um, Rangers is the best kept secret in Trinidad. I believe so as well. I yeah. believe so as well. And I think when the Ascension tournament comes out and people see them on TV, they they will be impressed because they have been working hard, even though, you know, the last two years we haven't played any football, they have been working very hard, developing the skills, and you will see it on the field, you know, and that will again bring more support and again then corporate trainer and Tobago will get involved. They will want to get involved. We will not go to them. They were one again. Well, you, you mentioned a, a crucial thing. We've been hearing it for years, mm. Richard, for years, in terms of bringing football back to the community. Mm. You started off with this in terms of the vision of, of, of the club. Um, we heard the Pro League saying that we need to get all the clubs. We take the, 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 mm. the, the W Connections and the Naughty Stars or now AC Porter Springs and we put them in a, in a, in a community. And that will now get the community to feel a sense of, of, of pride. pride. Um, but you also mentioned a crucial thing that no one spoke to about before. And, and, and they, they really they shy away from it. It's getting players from that community to be part of the team. Really. Not just going and take a community name. You could, just, you could take any name. Um, AC Paul Spain is AC Paul Spain. But where, 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 do, they, where do you identify AC Paul Spain in, in Paul Spain? And I think that's... What, what's your thoughts on, on how crucial is that for Yeah, and I, I was just going to support your point by su suggesting that Lockett is a hotspot. You know, it has been known to have violence. You know, and, and it's gang-based violence. 
it's phase two versus phase five, phase five versus phase four, and, and so on. But I can tell you here, sometimes we play in a game, and you would see the same gangs from phase two standing up next to the gangs from phase five, having a drink, watching the game. These are the same guys who will shoot one another on the road. You know, they, 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 this is not... It's not easy, well, fellas. Well, they, 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 they will shoot here. That, that, is, that is the power of football. And, 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 football. and just, to, just to go on a little bit. So, one, it has helped to bring the community together. And if you go back and you watch your statistics, because I communicate with the police in Laukida regularly, and the, the murder rate has declined significantly since we have started playing football here. You know, sometimes it is better to use the carrot than the stick. You know, patrolling and, and shooting and I don't feel as good, but I think the football has brought them together. It has made them more amiable. I don't think that they're totally gone, but it has contributed. It has saved some lives. I'm certain of it because they feel an affinity. If we play in um, Jablote, it's Laukita versus San Juan. So, you know, it's so that sort of affinity. And you know the team has been doing so well so they have that drive that connection with the team especially since some of the players from now okay though so in your in your view hmm. football is more than a hobby for you well for me football is a business <laughs> because at some point down the road this this is projected to 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 um to create some returns some positive returns right but for me it's a business we we need to. I, I think it. I think it's a. It should be deemed a business across mm -hmm. the board. Mm -hmm. Um, on 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 the level of the government, on the level of of the TTFA, on the leagues, with the, the FIFA Connect system, mm -hmm. um, it allows for players to be transferred a little bit, a little more ease. Um, in terms of the tracking of players from various levels. So if you're you have a player within a grassroots system with your club and you're connected with the, the FIFA Connect system. Now you have a development fee to, to earn. So it, there is a business in the grassroots and the development of football. What's your thought in terms of players, the, the, the transfers and the sale of players in terms of that part of business for the development and sustainability of, of clubs? Well, the problem is you really only make serious money with a really good player, you know? And those really, really good players, they don't come along often. You know, it, it's very, very rare. So I think basing or resting the entire revenue stream on you selling players is, is, is not a good idea because um, they rarely come along, very, very rare. You know, once every 10 years or, or something like that. It's, it's difficult, you know, you don't find them that often. And that should not be your only source of income. You know, that, that is, that's my take on it. It shouldn't. So, you know, what you're saying is develop a, a plan to, to the club to be sustainable and then use that as knowing that I think the, the number is one every every six, seven years you, you get a player of the, the caliber of, if you're serious about it, of the Dwight Yorks or the yeah. Russell Latapies or now the Levi Garcias. Um, and it's not, and we're seeing it on our national team. We, mm. We're really lacking for quality in terms of players. Um, so develop your model of, of make sure your, your club, get your club rooted within your community, get that fan base, we create revenue there, and then look at selling players when that... Yeah, if, if, if you can and you can, and, you, and, you, and, you, and I'm not telling you, don't develop yeah, yeah, them, yeah. far from it. You know, keep trying and you will eventually get one or two. Right. You know, and you would get some revenue stream. But that should not be the, the only or the sole source of um, income for your club. You know, um, like zone teams and they had a reliance on donations. Right. You know, you, it does have one or two businesses in the community that will help and support them. And of course, as you would know, most of it is done by the owners and the coach yeah, yeah, yeah. that has take all the money and they, they, they put in their, their savings, yes, the life, life savings, savings in the club, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. to make it work. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, and, and it's their life. That's it. That's the entire life. Um, as, as you mentioned, donations and, and because 
the, the Christ there of corporate trader supporting, um, you have been one of the, the, the major supporters of, of football for the last couple of years. Um, mm. Maybe the second largest supporter of football outside of the government or, or, or the top financial supporter outside of the government. What's, what's, what's the drive and the passion behind supporting um, women's football and supporting the Super League back in 2019? And what's, what's the drive behind? Well, we... We are, we actually did a feasibility study on football and football is a huge business. It's a massive business. It has a lot of potential and it has a lot of um, returns that could be made in it. If you, you manage it well and you, you um, operate professionally in an organized way, I believe this will happen. And that is, that is why we involved with it. We feel it will eventually um, do well you know and as i say and i said earlier i feel we this is the best kept secret but eventually it will come out you know well, it must come out i think i think out, yeah. i think the the lack of football for the last couple of years would would keep would have kept that that rangers mm. i think the persons within football that close to football would know they're hearing mm. they're hearing the, the rumbles coming of of, of that rangers team mm. of your rangers team um but when we talk about supporting football and, and supporting leagues, um, the administrative side comes into question. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned it in terms of the corporate trader not truly wanting to be part of it because of the animosity, because of the fighting and the infighting up for and, with, with and a, the lack of success and the lack of success. Um, and I think the, the the infighting would also lead to that lack of, of success yes. um, and would contribute to it. What's your thoughts on in terms of administrators? Um, the Minister of Sports mentioned it in, in a meeting with, with most of the stakeholders of football that they need to get their house in order. They need to get their act together. They need to understand that the players come first. What's your thoughts on, in terms of administration and the fighting amount? Well, we need to work together. That's one side of it. The other side of it is um, oil and water don't mix. <laughs> so you will always have some sort of conflict but you have to manage the conflict in a professional way whilst we may disagree we must not become disagreeable and I think sometimes we cross the line a little bit and we become disagreeable you know which is which is not good um, and that is one and then two we need to adopt a more professional approach you know as I said football is a business you have to adopt a business approach to it. It can't be a, um, a, a, a more ghetto behavior. You know, that, that is how we're trying to run it. And that, that, that wouldn't work. We have to have a professional, organized, and structured approach. I would suggest here, this is why the TTFA debt is allegedly $100 million. Because... The approach was not professional, it was not organized, it was not methodical. As, as you, you mentioned, the, the TTFA debt, uh, Richard, mm. I, I want, coming back on the next Saturday break, I want to get to you with, and, and have your thoughts. I'm being a finance man, being mm. a man behind with the numbers, I want to get your thoughts on the debt of the TTFA. So when we come back, we're getting a little more into the, the debt of the TTFA. The situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, Right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches. Right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladenstown come here for the carnival if, if you'll interview me. But how could you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a Roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. What for champions? Hey, Ascension!
attention. Quality for champions. at Magnificent Mall, number 271, Southern Main Road, McBean, Kuva. Amante Del Cafe. Happiness begins with brew. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. At our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. Fun DDI experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1-868-634. 1653 Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. And we're back, Richard. Um, a hundred million in debt, uh, could barely say it. The head of the normalization committee recently had an interview with, with Guardian Media Group, um, and, and said that the, the, the TTFA is insolvent currently and it's not it's dissolving the ttfa is not an option at this time that they are exploring but it is an option on the table um i want to start off there do you think that could ever be an option um to, to dissolve the ttfa well it's, it's it is an option it is an option but you have to weigh the cost versus the benefits right the, the major benefit is if you dissolve the TTFA, you would, of course, get rid of all the debt. <laughs> mm -hmm. The disadvantage is that you're going to create um, serious problems with anybody dealing with the, the new TTFA in the future because they will feel that they, will, they could get dissolved any minute. You know, In addition to that, it will have problems um, 
spread into other parts of the members members all over the world because they will feel that this is a new policy in FIFA and they could get dissolved right so it have pros and cons behind it um, I, I don't feel dissolving TTFA is necessary because I believe you could you could handle that without it and um, <coughs> Once there's support there, once there's a recurrent form of income coming in from FIFA, which is it is doing, and the government does support national teams traveling abroad, um, it's not necessary. As you mentioned support, the, the normalization committee as well, the head of the normalization committee, in that, that um, report would have hinted um, somewhat in terms of his idea of, of, of the debt repayment um, and, and mentioned that he's looking at FIFA and, and the government in terms of assisting in that, in that aspect in terms of the debt repayment. Um, I want to get, it's a twofold question. I want to get your idea in terms of what you have heard from the normalization committee when it comes to the debt repayment and what's your thoughts on terms of what, because you're a finance, finance man, in terms of what's your thoughts on in terms of what could really be done or you you think could be done well i haven't heard anything from the normalization <laughs> committee on it and to be honest with you, i find it very disappointing because they have been in office for about two years almost two years yeah. over two years it's over. going on two years going on two yeah. years going on two years a long time a long time and they still haven't done the plan the, the financial plan they still haven't done the constitutional reform and you know it's it's disappointing and and that is really a measure of their performance you know have you executed the work that you have been put there to do and they haven't done it for a long time and, and they seem to be okay with it there don't seem to be any urgency in fact some people might say they're trying to delay it for whatever reason and I find that disappointing. So hoping for a loan um, from the government, because it was mentioned that we, he's looking for some some entity, corporate Trinidad, the government, FIFA, to hopefully give a, let's give a blank check. Is that a plan? The, the, is that we consider a plan? Because then you have to pay back that. So you're still in debt once you... Is it a loan he wants or is it, does he want a grant? Well, it mentioned in terms of, it, it was mentioned in terms of a loan. Um, and I think he's on a grant. Well, he, he was saying it, a grant is, would always be an option as well, but it was also mention of hopefully getting a loan. Um, do you think, well, that is not really a debt repayment plan because you're still in debt. It's just you're, you're moving your debt from one creditor to the next. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, <laughs> what's your thoughts on... on no, I, I, I don't agree with that philosophy at all. In fact, I would describe it as amateurish. And I am disturbed because they have two accountants on the board, right? And that really is just not sustainable. That is, that is a plan that is just not sustainable. Because, <clears throat> and I'll explain why. Because you're asking the government of Trinidad and Tobago to pay off the 100 million. And it's not their fault they didn't incur it they didn't run up the debt they didn't mismanage the spending they didn't mismanage the revenue they didn't do none of it so why should you ask them and by extension the people of China and Tobago to pay for it that is not fair you know it have a, I, I remember um, there, there's a concept if you make a mess in the kitchen you clean it up don't wait for somebody to come and clean it up if TTFA made the mess TTFA have to clean it up, right? And and in a, in addition to that, what you're doing now is you're creating a, a terrible precedent, where the government now have to pay off any sort of mismanaged financial mismanagement by any sporting body. Is that the, the new norm? No, that that is not right. That is not fair. And that is not prudent financial management. I would never suggest that is a solution. That is going to create more problems. Because if, if, if cricket go on they, and they run up a, a $200 million, are we going to pay it off too? No. And then the, on the other side, if you, you, you're telling, saying FIFA have to pay it off, you're going to have the same problem. Are you now saying any time a member association mismanages, is FIFA going to pay off the debt? $200 million, $500 million US? 
No, you can't do that. That is why you need to set the tone. And if it was mismanaged, and obviously it was, TTFA and the members of TTFA have to stand the bongs. So what? 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 So I I understand mm -hmm. the concept behind what what you mentioned, and and it's 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 a valid one. What's your thoughts in terms of how it can be repaid? The solution. The solution. The solution is simple. If you have TTFA normally has a revenue around twenty four million. If you look at it over the last three or four years, you take out four million and say, okay, let's. It, it will be less. You're working with 10 million. You say, look, 10 million goes to pay back the debt, and the other 10 million is what you have to run the the, the um, association on. And that means that people have to buy the bullet. They have to tighten the belt. They have to be prudent. No more um, $5,000 lunches. No pay. No coach $200,000 a month. No. You have to pay a coach 10000 TT. Right? That is the salary rates in general, that is where you're paying them. Right? You can't go on no fancy trip and everybody go in and the team have have more administrators than players. You can't do all of those things. So you have to adopt a prudent financial approach and you, we the members, we TTFA have to stand the bonds. Right? It is not fair, it is not right to ask FIFA or TTFA or the government to pay for mismanaging something. They didn't mismanage it. Why should they pay it? And it is not a small amount of money. It's a large amount. In addition to that, Kiron, let me, let me just say this. I have question marks over that debt of 100 million because we have asked, as you would know, you as the president of East Zone, but have asked for the, um, the listing of creditors that... that um, Ernest and Young would have done, and they have not given it to us. And, and this leads me to be very concerned and to be suspicious about it. Why, why don't you want to show the members who TTFA owes? TTFA is a public company, you know, it's not a private company. This is not your own personal business. So I, I me as an as a accountant, as an auditor, I would be very, very suspicious if I asked for them, what are your creditors? And you, you have it, but you're telling me, no, you're not giving me. But, but a statement was made. I know, I know the recent mm. stakeholders meeting, EGM, that, <clears throat> that we had with the, 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 the normalization committee um, earlier in the year. It was asked, the Ernest and Young report, can the members gain access to that report? Um, and it was said that FIFA and Contact have paid for that report so that the, the members <laughs> the members are, are not entitled to see it. Um, no. what, what's, what's your take on that in terms of being no. a report on the membership, of creditors to the membership? How, how does that offer no. for the membership? No, that goes against all generally accepted accounting practice, all auditing guidelines. That is contrary. Because while, whilst Ernest and Young may have did, done the report, the fact is it was TTFA who gave them the information. So the information is in TTFA as we speak. It, it's, it's in it, right now. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's in that's, TTFA. That's one. And two, when you withhold information, valid information from members, because remember, as members, we were disenfranchised because the debt was too high. So it would only be fair that I want to know what is the debt and who we owe. It is only fair. And if you're telling me, no, I don't know the debt, but you're disenfranchising me, I would be concerned. I would, be, I would then consider, boy, it has something in that report that they don't want us to see. But, you know, and, and, and this is not good practice. Any auditor would, would write you up for that. So, all right, we're not, we're not seeing the creditors. Um, mm -hmm. It was mentioned, it was asked for before the AGM recently had um, of the TTFA. And a, another side of it came out where they're saying some matters are before the court, and if the members know who the persons are, it could in, in, in accounting. That, does that prove to be a problem for a, a, a legal no, matter? No, no, no. In auditing, any information an auditor asks you or a director, 
Oh, and she held her ask you, and you, and you refuse to give them. It's a serious, serious infringement. And I would suggest to you it has case law on it. If you go back to the courts and you, you look at the matter with John Williams, between John Williams and Keith Lucloy, Keith Lucloy was asking for information. John Williams told him no. And of course, there was a debacle and, and a documentary done and so on later on. But any auditor, any accountant would be very, very concerned when information is willfully withheld. You could go to the court and demand it. What, how serious is, is, is the, the, with, the withholding of these creditors? I think very serious. Because they're, they're, it now lends itself to what happens life after the normalization committee. The membership of the TTFA would elect a new president whenever that time mm. comes. And this new president will not know the... Is it that they have to now go and do a, a new... <laughs> a new a new document or is it that when the normalization leaves office they're leaving with this because they don't want the, the, the membership to have it so they would leave with this this, this no, report this, this information is in the TTFA when Ernest and Young did the report they would have gone to TTFA got the information from the staff there and would have then verified it whether they did a 100% verification or they did a sample or they did a random sample or a stratified sample is um i don't know i don't know how accurate it is but um when you withhold information it's a serious issue so <laughs> i try i try to get to the point of do you think that the normalization committee because they keep on saying this is a fifa and contact Half report it's not a ttfa report it's not a membership report no. it's a so it's it's it it's means TTFA report. it's a TTFA in your in your in your but opinion. But the TTFA is responsible for preparing their own financial statements. Let me, let me make it clear. TTFA, the Normalization Committee, is responsible for preparing the financial statements, which includes the creditors, right? The auditor is responsible for expressing an opinion on whether the financial statements show a true and fair view, right? Auditors don't prepare creditor list is the ttf responsible for it right so so it's there as you said it's it's, it's there. there when it's they there. leave when in, well, i don't know if they go ever leave but if they leave the ttfa creditor list will still be there but i i am doubtful i and I, i'm 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 saying this out of um just pure common sense i'm doubtful it's 100 million because when the last set of audited financials was done, it was reported as 45. So how can in a few months it raise from 45 to 100? Well, we're in Trinidad, eh? I have so, somebody here, money go and pay out, everybody come and have no, a bill. you see, what happens <laughs> is sometimes um, the international accounting standards allows you to make estimates. So it could be that they're overestimating, yeah. right? That this, and I more feel so it is not valid. In addition to that, you can actually sit down with most of them and say, here now, we can't pay you this money, but we can pay you 50 cents, 60 cents, 75 cents, whatever it is. Um, and and, and, and you, you can negotiate it down. Because as it is, they, they, they won't get anything. Do, have you been in football, been around football, mm -hmm. and persons around football, have you ever heard that the normalization committee would have reached out to creditors in, in, in that forum in terms Why of it, like, but I think that would <laughs> it, I think the the, the opinions or, or, or the, the, the solutions that you would have mentioned I think mm -hmm. if taken those solutions because you're mentioning taking a part of your, your yearly revenue towards the, the debt being repaid if you'll be talking 10 million a year and we had 100 see, million you see if your debt is 100 I more feel it's around 50 right this is around 50. In five years, you pay it off. I, I think to a corporate trade, I'm seeing that sense of, of yeah. management will also, that will also lift. But for that to work, you must be disciplined. Mm -hmm. You have to ban your belly. You have to buy the bullet. You have to cut all your, your unnecessary expenditure. You have to be prudent in what you're doing. Right? You can't be living like a, a billionaire. You know? And you have to do it for five years. But I think we also had to do it going on. We we had to continue because we could end up back in the state. I think 
the prices of we seeing a lot of persons being hired mm -hmm. through the normalization committee coaches um accountants persons being fired um managers we, we recently had a manager in, in adrian romaine hired to, to help manage a manager and then <laughs> then being removed no one knows what happened with the situation no one knows so much money is being paid this added re this added recurrent expenditure in terms of a monthly recurrent expenditure being added to the ttfa with no real plan what what's your thought because the normalization well, would have come for a purpose well, well you see i'll tell you something um kiran the national team and trainer and tobago people will pay you to go on it to coach it to be physio, to be. Our coach, Dave Kamena, probably one of the best coaches in the Caribbean, right? You don't have to pay him anything to coach the national team. He will coach it for free. In fact, he will pay you to coach it. So you paying a man $250,000 as a coach or a physio, or, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It does not make sense. These guys, just the, the, the stigma of saying they... The coach in national team or the the um there was the assistant in the national team is reward enough you know there's reward enough paying them these exorbitant rates i don't know where it come from or why they do it but it does not make sense it i, I believe it really stemmed from the the introduction of of foreign coaches coming in with with at their level um but when you look back at the past of, of the, 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 the course for both coaches like Bertha Sinclair and, and our local coaches, we, we never had that, that, that cap. Um, and then when the foreign coaches came, the local coaches or, or the, the regional coaches believed that, all right, we, we, we want that same amount of money. But it is not sustainable over a long it's period of time. It's not sustainable. So I think we need to really sit down as a... <laughs> And you know, they have a saying, they trail lemons, you have to make lemonade. And you, you can't spend money you don't have. And that, that is what they have been doing for the last 20 years. This $100 million, debt, the alleged $100 million debt, didn't come about overnight. This has happened over a period of time. I mismanaged over mismanagement, over mismanagement, over mismanagement. How do you think, Richard, is the, the, the handling of the normalization committee in this period of time for the last two years well, how do you how do you well i i would measure them by by their their tasks they were given tasks to do the debt repayment plan do the constitutional reform and they have not done it that that's the bottom it has no emotion it have no animosity nothing like that the fact is they just haven't done it whether it's willful or they are unable or they choose not to do it or they probably did it and they didn't tell anybody i i don't know but the bottom line is they just haven't done the job how much of it would you would you place on the the the, the little fight you riff it had with the previous administration taking the, the normalization to court because you, you came in you had your mandate you know that's your mandate and how much of it do you think that no, that well that i think eventually mr wallace and Mr. Lucloy realized they didn't have the membership and they gave up. That is when they, they gave up. Yeah. They gave up when they realized they didn't have the support of the membership. Right? And I, I, they, I don't feel they have been involved or they've been doing anything. So I, I don't see that as an and, issue. And, and the relationship between the membership and, and the normalization committee, what's your thoughts on? on because well, we recently had an AGM. What's your yeah, thoughts that, on? That relationship is strained because um, one, the communication is bad and two um the uh, the members but well, well i can't speak for all of them <laughs> but certain members i can speak for the 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 general consensus is they don't feel that these are football people and as such they don't understand the issues and the problems involved in football and and then the third issue is they um they're just not getting the job done, you know. Um, the financial plan and the 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 constitutional reform. I understand certain members would have written the plans and sent it to them already, but they have ignored it. 
So, uh, what, 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 being, being a, a guy running organizations, being part of, of corporate Trinidad, your, your, your management setting a document to you in terms of, of helping in terms of the overall performance of, of the organization. And no, no time, no, no, nothing has been paid. No, no time has been paid towards it. What, what, what what's your, your mm -hmm. how, how would you deem that scenario? Well, sometimes it's difficult to look in the mirror, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I, I believe a document was sent in good faith. It tried to help them, but again, they probably didn't like the authors. <laughs> they didn't like what was said. They, um, they feel the way the solution is to get the government to pay the hundred million, you know, which I personally feel is erroneous. That is absolutely crazy. Or get FIFA to do it? Absolutely crazy. I, that is a massive, massive, you know, I, I'd like it. To, um, you have three daughters, and one daughter, I'm going to say, um, Daddy, I want to get a new car. And if you buy that new car for that daughter, you had to buy cars for the yeah, other two daughters yeah, they too. They come in, they come in, they are coming, yeah. they are coming. And you had to sit down and think about that, because they can say, I love her more mm -hmm. than me. Mm -hmm. And that's such a confusion will play out. So if FIFA pays off this hundred million, any kind of financial mismanagement anywhere else in the world, does FIFA have to go and pay it off? That, that's 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 a, a, a serious problem FIFA could be faced yeah, with. Yeah, if, if cricket run up our $500 million debt, would the government have to pay it off? No. Uh, that, that's a serious concern. So, you know, you need to consider that. It's a nice idea, but it's amateurish. That's how amateur would think. We, we now have a, a, besides the debt, besides the, the, the mandate given by the Normalization Committee of the debt repayment plan or coming up with a debt repayment plan, the fixing the statutes and the day-to-day -day running of the, the TTFA, the, T the, the normalization committee has taken on an additional burden of trying to form a unified league. <laughs> there, this is if there, there's no documented evidence to show any normalization committee taking on this responsibility. I've, I've read numerous reports of normalization committees. The last one, Guyana, there was nothing of the sort like this taken on by a normalization committee. What's your thoughts on the normalization committee taking on this running of a unified league? Well, that's good. Um, I, I I hope he gives Rangers some um, funding. <laughs> you know, that's good. We, we would certainly be playing in the league. You know, but um, logically and reasonably no. That's, that's not a good way because he seems to be struggling with management of the national teams. You know, and to come and now try to run a league, totally different um, situation, much, much more difficult. You know, so that that would not be a good idea. I I would not suggest that. But don't get me wrong. If if they do it, Rangers playing. You you would you would yeah. That would be a. And, and you know something that's just just um come to mind. If you remember the financial meltdown in in two thousand and eight, we had all these. Um, investment banks crash on the New York Stock no. Exchange. The United States government chose to allow three of them to collapse. They did not support them. For the same reason, if you support that because of mismanagement, if you support it, any kind of mismanagement in the future, you're going to have to support yeah. it again. And that's the same thing that, that popping up here. The U.S. government they only elected to, um, to prop up a few of them. I think about three of them, they are allowed to collapse. I don't remember the names offhand. But that is the same problem that you're having here. If you allow China and Tobago, TTFA, to be supported by FIFA after 100 million in debt, you're going to see other member associations have to be supported as well. And that is why they are chose to allow them to collapse. And the managers were fired, and all the staff let go, and and I think they were bought out by one of the banks, uh, right? So, uh, Richard, it's mm. been a pleasure having you on set, Mr. Richard Ferguson, the man behind the the Locketer Terminator Rangers team. I think 
I think it was a pleasure having you on set. I think your, your, your solution to what's debt is one that most persons would, would appreciate. It's it's a fresh view on, mm. the, on the debt more than the Glenn FIFA send a blank check or the government um, bailing out the TTFA. So Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Bailing them out is not a good idea. You have to. You have, the message you need to send is if you mismanage, you have to dilute it. You dilute your problem. You create the problem, you deal with it. If I create the problem, I go deal with it. You know, that, that has to be the message, right? Um, that, that, that solution is, is not, not intelligent at all. And we have seen it in the past. If you do your economic history, anytime there have been financial collapses, you know, people have suffered. So it's, it's what you're saying is, find a way to, to, to fix your problem that you got yourself into and then maybe look for support. So it's support instead of bailout in terms of... And, of, and there of is a, there's a simple yeah. solution. Yeah, your revenue is 20 million a year. Your debt is, is, is probably about 50. Mm. After you negotiate and you get rid of all the what not really shouldn't be there, the, um, the debt is probably around 50. So you're looking in five years, you're out of debt. Yeah. So it, it's not that hard. It, it's, but I, I think I think after the, the, the <laughs> I think after the normalization looks at this this program, I think they'll have a another oh, okay. another option to put place on the table. The normalization know about this plan already. Oh. They yeah. like their plan. But I would be surprised if it works. I would be surprised if that was the case. You know, you you're going to encourage mismanagement and and um fraud and financial impropriety you're encouraging it I, I believe we need to we need to find a solution to it i do think fifa or countercalf would have sent the normalization committee here to find the easy way out to say well we're just writing a check because they would they could have done that they could have done it already 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 and the government could have done it years now because the debt has been incurring for some 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 time so as i said before Richard, it's a pleasure mm -hmm. having you on set um pleasure having a, a discussion with you and that does it for another Ascension Football Show. Remember to follow us on our Instagram, YouTube, and our website at the AscensionFootballTournament.com.